Okay, so welcome to this video on uh, the general normal distribution. Okay, so this is a generalization, clearly, of the uh, standard normal distribution which we have studied so far. And the reason the standard normal distribution is in many ways uh, more studied than the general normal distribution is because the general normal distribution can be reduced down into problems in the standard normal distribution. Okay, uh, so let's imagine that we have some abstract probability space over here, uh, some abstract probability space, let's say, over here, uh, which we'll call omega f and p, and we have a random variable x, which is going to map it onto uh, the real line, and it's going to be distributed normally, standard normally, with uh, mean 0 and variance 1. Okay, let's imagine taking functions of this random variable. So let's um, imagine having, oh dear, let's imagine setting up another random variable, which is going to be, uh, let's say, y, which is going to be a times uh, x. In fact, actually, uh, uh, no, actually, we'll keep it a uh, times x plus b. Okay, and this pen's starting to go, so let's just wait a second and say, find another one. Okay, uh, so... Uh, let's say that the new random variable y is a times x plus b. So, uh, what I mean by that, uh, that again is going to map you back onto the real line. Uh, so, what I mean by that is uh, this random variable here takes out, comes in here, and it ascribes it a real number. So, this is x of s. Now, what I want you to do is take that real number, I want you to multiply it by some a, which is a real number, so a and b are both elements of the real numbers. Uh, so that will multiply it up by a, and uh, then I want you to add on b. Okay, uh, so you get some new random variable, which is y, uh, which is over here. Okay, and what we want to ask is how is y going to be distributed? Okay, so, uh, so y is equal to ax uh, plus b. So the first thing we just want to check is that we're going to map it onto the whole real numbers. So if x is going to map uh, this, uh, this abstract probability space onto the whole real numbers, then uh, if we look at this function, uh, here is b, and so there's some a like that, but the function basically is one-to-one. -one. So it is going to map the entire real numbers onto the entire real numbers. So this sample space over here, this um, of our uh, new random variable y, uh, which our new random variable y is mapping our abstract, random, our abstract probability space onto, is indeed going to be the whole real numbers. So what we want to do is ask how is uh, this new random variable going to be distributed? Okay, so uh, we would like to know things like what is its expected value and what is its variance. Okay, so the expected value of y, uh, we can do by linearity, is going to be the expected value of a x plus b. Now, uh, by linearity, this is equal to a times the expected value of x uh, plus the expected value of b, which we know is just b. Uh, so we get that the expected value of our new random variable is going to be a times the expected value of x plus b. Now the expected value of x was equal to zero, so this is just going to give us that the mean of this new uh, distribution of this new uh, random variable is b. So the expected value of y is going to be equal to b. And secondly, we want would like to know what the variance of ax plus b is equal to. Well, uh, we have seen from properties of variance that uh, the constant doesn't affect it at all, but this, uh, but this multiplying by a does affect it, so you'll get that it's equal to a squared times the variance of x. Now, the variance of x is 1, so we're going to get that the variance of ax plus b is equal to a squared. Now, what we'd like to do is calculate uh, the PDF of this new random variable here. Okay, of this new, sorry, the we want to calculate uh, the PDF of this uh, probability uh, space over here. Okay, uh, so um, the way that you do this is firstly you use CDFs and then you convert from you convert the CDF of this one into the CDF of this one, and then you get uh, the PDF basically uh, by differentiating the CDF. So we know that the CDF CDF of uh, the random variable of the um, random variable x. So the CDF of this probability distribution over here is uh, given by, uh, the, well, the CDF of x is uh, phi, uh, phi of x, which is the standard 
uh, well, uh, basically we can't work it out, so we've given it a name, phi of x, uh, which is the area under the standard normal distribution uh, curve, so if I draw it out it looks something like uh, this, and phi of x is going to integrate the area all the way up to uh, the value x, so this is equal to the integral from negative infinity to x of uh, the PDF of the standard normal distribution, which is 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2 uh, dx. Okay, uh, so turn over the page and we will do some more. Right, okay. So what we would like to ask is what is the CDF of our new, of our new random variable? So what is the probability that y is less than or equal to some little y, where little y is an element of the real numbers. Okay, well, uh, y is equal, remember, to a, which is some constant, times x plus b. So this is the probability that a times x plus b is less than or equal to little y, uh, which is equal to uh, the probability that ax is less than or equal to y minus b, because b is just a real number, so that's perfectly valid. And this is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to y minus b over a. So I have reduced the problem of finding the probability that y, uh, this new random variable which we constructed by uh, multiplying all of the values of uh, that the all of the values that the random variable x maps you onto by a and then adding b, uh, we've reduced the problem of finding the CDF of that into a problem of uh, a problem involving the CDF of the random variable x. So this is equal to phi of y minus b over a. Okay, so that's this technique here is known as standardization. So I've reduced the problem of uh, finding the uh, CDF of the uh, the CDF. I've reduced the problem of finding the area under the PDF of this new random variable y, the PDF of course we don't know yet, but I've reduced the problem of finding the area under that, or finding the probability that y is less than or equal to little y, into the problem of uh, finding, uh, oh, well, the problem involving the CDF of the standard normal, and of course we know that statistics tables exist for such that I could look this value up. So if I did have a random variable y, which is equal to ax plus b, uh, and I wanted to know the probability that y was less than or equal to little y, I would just subtract b from y, uh, divide it by a, and then go to some statistics table and look up what is phi of that value. Okay, and that technique is known as standardization. Uh, so, uh, now, uh, this is the CDF, basically. The probability that y is less than or equal to little y is equal to phi of y minus b over a. So if we want to know the PDF, if we want to know the PDF, if we want to know little f of uh, little f of y x. Uh, so that's that y there is just denoting that this is the PDF of our random variable y. Now uh, it's going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x. Uh, well, the derivative. Ah, I've used this variable little y down here, so I should put little y there. The derivative of little y. It doesn't make any difference. I would have just had to change the variable here of phi of y minus b over a. Okay, so if I differentiate this, uh, firstly let's differentiate the outer bit. I get phi prime of y minus b over a times the derivative of the inside bit, which is just 1 over a, because this is y times 1 over a minus a constant, and the derivative of that is just what, uh, the multiple of y, which is 1 over a in this case. Now, phi prime, phi prime of some, phi prime of x is equal to the PDF of the standard normal distribution, and x is standardly di uh, is distributed by the standard normal distribution, so I could write uh, the PDF of little x, uh, which is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2. So now I just need to plug that in over there to get that the uh, PDF of uh, my uh, random variable y as a function of little y is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi uh, times this a over here, so I'll put that down here, a, uh, times e to the negative y minus b over a squared over 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the PDF of the general normal distribution. PDF of general normal distribution. Distribution. So y 
is distributed is uh, is distributed general normal distribution, and we say that y is distributed normally. Now, what was its mean? Remember, we calculated its mean. Its mean was equal to b, and its variance was equal to a squared. So that is how you would write how y is distributed. And you can see that its PDF is extremely analogous uh, to the standard normal distribution. Uh, the only difference is up here you need to take any y, subtract it by b, and divide it by a. Basically standardize it, and also divide uh, by the standard deviation down here. Now, uh, to use more, uh, to use more, um, more classical uh, notation, uh, one would write y is distributed normally with mean mu and uh, standard devi uh, well variance uh, sigma squared and uh, you would write therefore that the that the PDF of this nor of this random variable big Y uh, as a function of little y it w is equal to 1 over sigma the square root of 2 pi e to the negative y minus mu over sigma squared divided by 2. Okay, so that is the PDF of the general normal distribution. So just to recap how we got the general normal distribution, we took a random variable that was distributed, that was distributed standard normally, and we multiplied it by a constant and uh, added on another real number, and we got a new random variable which was distributed in a general normal fashion. And basically that tells us that we can take uh, any general normal distribution and turn it into a standard normal distribution because what we've just done is we've taken a standard normal distribution and turned it into a general normal distribution so it shouldn't be too difficult to go the other way around and indeed that's what we've really done here we've uh, converted uh, back in terms of the uh, CDF and PDF of the uh, of the um, standard normal distribution so if I if I look at what this looks like graphically uh, then uh, we would have that um, we would have uh, a function that looks something like this. So we have a bell curve like that, centered at uh, mu, and uh, the variance, this sigma, would determine how spread out the distribution is. So the bigger sigma is, uh, the more spread out it is, and the smaller sigma is, the more localized it is, like this. And that's the general normal distribution. So you can vary the mean and you can vary the variance. Uh, so that's the general normal distribution. Okay, and uh, just to recap the fact that if I want the area under a general nor under a general normal distribution, so let's say I want the probability, I want the probability that big Y is less than or equal to little y, uh, then that would be equal to the integral from negative infinity to uh, y of our PDF, 1 over uh, sigma the square root of 2 pi, e to the negative uh, y minus uh, mu over sigma squared over 2 uh, d, uh, dy. And what we would do, uh, we know of course, we knew, we calculated the way we even got this PDF in the first place was we said uh, that the probability that y was less than or equal to little y was given by uh, phi of y minus b over a, where phi is the CDF of the standard normal distribution. So we know that this is going to be equal to phi of y minus mu over sigma. Uh, but let's get that from this integral. Let's go back the other way now. Uh, and basically, the way you would do that is you'd let uh, u equal y minus mu over sigma, uh, then we could replace this integral with, um, uh, we could, just by using integration by substitution, we could replace this by, we'd have to rectify the limits, uh, so we'd have to uh, integrate between negative infinity and, we were integrating but up to y, instead now what we're going to have to do is, uh, we're going to have to work out what u would be, so stick in y here, my, and I've made a slight confusion here. I've made this quite confusing because I've used the same variable here as I've used down here where this should have been replaced by a dummy variable. So I will quickly do that. I will replace this with a dummy variable. So let's say dt. Okay. And we know that this is indeed phi of y minus mu over sigma. So I should let u be equal to t minus mu over sigma. So now stick in y as t and we'll get that this should be equal to y minus up to y minus mu over sigma. Then we get over, we get the integral of 1 over sigma the square root of 2 pi 
e to the negative u squared over 2, and then we have to replace dt by du, so du we know is equal to 1 over uh, sigma dt, so uh, dt is therefore sigma du, and if we uh, cancel the, d, uh, the sigmas, we'll get that this is the integral between uh, negative infinity and y minus mu over sigma, 1 over the square root of 2 pi, e to the negative u squared over 2 du. And that is just the definition of, of uh, phi of uh, y minus mu over sigma, because that's the way we defined uh, phi of any variable x. Uh, is equal to would be equal to the integral from negative infinity 2x of 1 over the square root of 2 pi uh, e to the negative u squared over 2 du, where u is just a dummy variable. So that clearly is obviously equal to phi of y minus mu over sigma. So it's nice to see that everything works out nicely there. So that is the, an introduction to the general normal distribution and how, um, if you wanted uh, to work out the probability that y, uh, given that y is distributed normally with mean mu and uh, variance uh, sigma squared, how you would work out the probability that y is less than or equal to some little y, where little y is just an element of the real numbers. The way you would do it uh, is you'd uh, is you just take uh, phi of little y, you subtract off the mean, divide by the variance, which is uh, which is the process of standardization. You're reducing the problem to a problem in the standard normal distribution, and then you take phi of that, uh, and phi is something that either your calculator will be able to work out, or, well, your calculator will be able to apply numerical methods and work out, or you will be able to look up in statistical tables.